Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning, and this is my son Ben, and welcome to the show, <laughs> to the live tasting of Beaumont. We have the 12, 15, and 18-year-old here on our cask. Yeah, it's, an, it's a nice live tasting. You've been inside the distillery. I've been actually just outside the distillery. I had a lovely uh, interview with the, uh, le not late, uh, the, the former um, distillery manager or dis master distiller at the distillery. And it was really a lovely chat. And Bomo is really a iconic distillery and a very, very old distillery. Yeah, and the chat is here on our channel uh, with mm -hmm. a uh, former distillery manager, brand manager. Um, and you stayed at the cottages? Oh yeah, I stayed at the cottages. The, on so the premise? The, the, uh, the Beaumont distillery, you have the distillery, then you have cottages. You can rent the cottages and the cottages are really, really nice. They are just right next to the distillery and right next to the pier as well. Um, They're a little expensive, but you get a full bottle. Oh yeah, they're a little expensive, but you get a, a bottle inside the the uh, the house. And if you are into uh, into fishing, uh, you can just take your fishing rod with you. And in Scotland, it's uh, legal for everyone. Everyone has the freedom to fish with the fishing rod. So you're not allowed to fish with a net. You never have to license or I don't know something EU. Not very long then, but uh, you can go to the pier and just fish with your fishing rod. That's always leave in in the sea not in the locks yeah but, in the sea in the sea you're always allowed mm -hmm. to fish with a fishing rod and i've actually caught two fish with my friend there and we made the fish and it was really really delicious but it had like fish bones all over <laughs> it was the fish with the most fish bones i've ever eaten <laughs> i don't know what the people do but at the fish factories and that kind of stuff to get all the fish bones out but this one was such a it was just so fresh we were just at the the lighthouse and we fished two fish and then we brought them home and made them just i don't know within the hour it was so fresh and fish bony <laughs> so yeah that was my experience at the bomo cottages yeah so we did a lot of brain work to decide in which sequence we taste that whiskey. <laughs> yeah, so this is the sequence we're tasting from 12 over 15 to 18. But if you have a huge crowd of, of people, um, people drink a lot, you should turn around. Because when people had too much of whiskey, mm -hmm. then you can serve anything. <laughs> so then you should go from the best to the worst. Um, but we here just sipping a little bit. We're going from the 12 year old over the 15 year old to the 18 year, year old. There are a lot of other mm -hmm. Beaumont whiskies out there. The one without an age statement, the special bottlings, the older ones, 25 year old. I had a black Beaumont. There's a video here on the channel where I taste the black Beaumont. In the moment, the bottle costs 16,000. Mm -hmm. the, re the residue in the bottle always gets more. The more I drink, the more expensive it gets. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when I opened the bottle, it was around 4,000, and now it's 16,000, still 40% in. <laughs> yeah, um. so Beaumont is a collector's item as well. And uh, <clears throat> these three bottles are widely available, and this is very, very good because Beaumont is one of the very few distilleries which is able to provide old matured whiskey all around the year. So this is very, very good at Beaumont. And we decided to take these ones because there are uh, some miniature sets outside where you might have been able to buy them so that you're, yeah, so that you have the chance to taste with us online. And we always give, if you're looking for the next uh, tasting, uh, live tasting, we always give uh, in front which whiskey we will taste so that mm -hmm. you have the chance for a few weeks to buy or to get those uh, miniatures or even big bottles. Uh, and to, in the end of this tasting, we'll give an outlook for the next one, which will be an introductory uh, tasting. So stay tuned up to the end. Uh, you will receive what you need for the next one. Mm -hmm. Let's have a little bit of a background about the distillery, yeah. where the distillery is. 
Beaumont is located on the Isle of Isla. The Isle of Isla is one of the islands in the Inner Hebrides. Um, it's one of the British Isles, <laughs> next to the famous <laughs> British island, Great Britain. <laughs> yeah. And it's part of the United Kingdom. Yeah, I think I did it correct now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. And here you see the map of the Isle of Isla. Northeast of it, you have the Isle of Jura. And right in the middle of the Isle of Isla is the town Beaumont. And this contains... Which is the capital. Capital of, yeah, of Isla. Mm -hmm. And in that town, you do have the famous Beaumont distillery. And what I didn't mention before is the Beaumont uh, town has a pool and it's being heated by the... Uh, Distillery the water, yeah. The, 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 yeah the, the, the cooling water. The cooling water Close. heats up the pool. That's pretty cool. And <laughs> yeah, so right uh, above the distillery or north of the distillery is the Loch Indal, which is like the, yeah, from the sea, a lock. Yeah. And a salt that, water lock. A salt water lock. And that gives the name to the distillery because Beaumont is Gaelic and means the Great Reef. And that's because in this Loch Indal, there is a reef. And when you look out the window, uh, outside the distillery, and there is, uh, what's it, the tide is low, mm -hmm. and then you can almost see the reef. You can see where it uh, flows a bit strange in the water. And back in the days, the distillery was supplied by ship. So there was a, uh, a sail ship, a big sail ship going into Loch Indal, or later a steamer and then they uh, got unloaded, little yeah. unloaded but they didn't uh, didn't go to the pier the pier was a bit too small so they had to have smaller boats going from the bigger boat and there's even a really nice photo up in the tasting room uh, i think it's the gray building in the middle uh, where they where you see uh, one, one of the long long rowing boats the british long rowing boats and there's a big horse standing right in the middle of that boat <laughs> <laughs> it looks really confident that horse so it probably did that a few times but it <laughs> just got shipped to isla and yeah so that's where they got the supply for the distillery and what is uh, a bit strange is when you look at the bottle you see uh, established 17 uh, nine, uh, nine, 79, which is way before the time uh, when the stilling was uh, legalized in the Highlands. So um, why did they? Why were they allowed to do distill their whiskey there? It's because yeah, the British Empire was uh, empire of ships. So the taxman was able to sail to all the islands, but it was not able to cross the highlands. So they couldn't tax the people in the highlands, so it was forbidden to distill alcohol there, but on the islands you were allowed to do alcohol. The distillery is known for smoky whiskey, so it's medium smoky whiskey, and it has a lot of Oloroso sherry casks. We will find that later within the taste. Uh, it produces about 2 million liters of pure alcohol per year, which is quite a substantive amount. Mm -hmm. And when you look into the history of the distillery, it was uh, closed during the Second World War. And during the Second World War, the Royal Air Force Coastal Command was stationed there. Yeah, that uh, flying boats. <laughs> so they were in the they, lock. Yeah. They were there, stationed and commanding all the the uh, bombers to uh, hunt for the German submarines that mm -hmm. were fighting the the war in yeah in the Atlantic from 1940 to 1943. Uh, they had uh, three um, squadrons, wings, or yeah. what was squadrons, squadrons, wings. Squadrons. I don't know, <laughs> bunch of <laughs> planes there. <laughs> and yeah, in 1980, Queen Elizabeth II visited Beaumont, and she also got some cars. We will find out yeah, a bit more about that Yeah, this was the first later. visit of a of a royal on mm -hmm. Isla. On mm -hmm. Isla. and in 2014, the company got sold to Beam Suntory. And this is where the company belongs right now. So the company leaves them pretty much alone. They do have a bit of here and there with them. But uh, from my point of view, they are pretty independent. And the style of Beaumont, a bit visually, changed a bit visually over the years. But, uh, but the change was made uh, before the sale to Centauri. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the new bottle 
Isn't that new? Mm -hmm. I think it was introduced around the year 2000 to 2003. Um, and in that time, they ended the production for the blended whiskey industry. So this is now a complete malt whiskey uh, mm -hmm. distillery. And then they, they changed uh, the appearance of the bottle so that they uh, stand out better on the shelf. It's a little taller. Uh, yeah, not the standard liquor bottle as all uh, whiskies then had. So it's, uh, yeah, it's new. I, I can see a lot of German guys in there. Yeah. <laughs> I recognize the names from, the, name, the, yeah. from the German <laughs> chat. Can you speak some Bavarian English? My English is very good and sometimes I'm not so good. <laughs> <laughs> not Bavarian. That's not Bavarian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know that from the footballers. The, the German footballers are really bad. <laughs> First the wise wash, then the sauerkraut. <laughs> <laughs> so let's have a bit of the 12 then. Yeah, okay. So, so the, the 12 yeah. year old is uh, reasonably priced, well below 30, and it's widely available. It's a million seller. It's, uh, I think, the whiskey which is most often sold or bottled at Beaumont. And uh, it's out there for a long, long time. And then there were some enhancements to the range, uh, but the 12 year old, or changes to the range, but the 12 year old was always there and I think will always be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the standard and it's one of the standards of the world. Mm -hmm. So it belongs, from my point of view, to the five most popular whiskies worldwide. Single malt whiskies. Single malt whiskey, of course. <laughs> uh, so it's a 40%er. Uh, it was matured in bourbon casks and got a finish in Oloroso sherry casks. And the dis uh, distillery uh, um, describes it as vanilla ice with a bonfire. Mm -hmm. So the smoke is there immediately. And I have a little bit of citrus from the distillery character. The peatiness is quite high. It wasn't that high the first time. An hour ago I had this one. Well, it's tens now. A little honey note. So citrus, honey, smokiness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do get that citrus note quite substantially. Um, And it's you, you do have a lot of that uh, bourbon um, character. So it's uh, a good amount of honey, good amount of vanilla, good amount of uh, caramel. I do like it. It's slightly floral, I would say. And it's uh, incredibly light, I would just describe it. Did a bit of rearranging there. <laughs> yeah, and you have to move a little bit outside. <laughs> so here you can see the, uh, the card boxes are very tall, taller than others. Yeah. Hmm? Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Astonishingly, a lot of oak. Bah. On the tongue, more oak. Warm. Chocolate. Mm -hmm. Cladding my mouth. Oakiness. But only very, very few uh, chocolate notes in the back. So there's no no distinct bitterness as other um, sherry cask maturation has. Wonderful, welcoming, intense smell, uh, taste. Mm -hmm. mm. I think it's uh, pretty intense for what I had in the smell. It's, um, mm. I would have expected a much more lighter whiskey. It's actually very, I wouldn't say very spicy, it's spicy with a good amount of oak and uh, uh, a substantial amount of smoke. So yes, the, the smoke 
is there in the nose, but it's substantially more in the taste. Mm. In the nose, I now have a vanilla. Mm -hmm. Lots of vanilla. And it's friendly in the nose. Mm -hmm. It's friendly in the nose and mm -hmm. quite substantial in the, uh, in the taste. In the taste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. It's pepper spicy. Mm. Warm choco smoky. Mm. I like it. It's a uh, medium peated, yeah. It's it's interesting. Uh, we, we had discussed that earlier. For its uh, price to um, flavor ratio, it's one of a, a really good whiskies. Mm -hmm. So they the the price for the twelve year old stayed pretty low. Didn't rise that steeply. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now go on. Let's move to more technical production. Here we see one of the malting floors, one of the uh, residual malting floors. Today they're just producing, as you remembered, 15% of the malt production there. The rest is imported. Uh, from the maltings on Isla and uh, they have a specific peatiness of 35 ppm and uh, whenever or depending on the age of the bottle uh, what your taste and smell will be different to those 35 ppm. Um, the malt is steeped for 27 hours in fresh water which is drawn from the uh, small creek uh, which uh, flows by the distillery, the Creek Lagan. And then for six to seven years the malt is spread on the floors and is then turned every uh, four hours. So this was a tedious work uh, in former times where people got really uh, arm aches and to buckle and whatever you could imagine. Um, then uh, the green malt is placed here on that floor. Um, no, uh, that's the floor where they collect then the, uh, the malt with his, well, motorized shovel <laughs> or sledge or how you call that. So there's a motor uh, uh, turning in a metal rope uh, because the malt is so heavy and then you could release it, turn it back, and then move in the next one. And then it goes onto uh, the floor where it's dried. Here you see it, the kiln on the top, where you can see this pyramid-shaped roof going up, where the hot uh, water vapor uh, with, the, uh, with the peated air from the peat fire from below uh, is led to to the top out of the kiln and on this roasts with the uh, well with the air uh, not airtight bottom the mold is lying on on that a few inches thick and it's dampy inside I tried once uh, to take photographs when it's filled and working <laughs> but the camera camera turns immediately foggy uh, just to the inside so I had to, to dry it for two days to get everything out of it so it's quite difficult uh, to have a working kiln uh, to photograph. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I photographed once, but you have to do it from outside. From the outside, yeah. <laughs> you just see the, the door and there's the steam coming out. So here you see the kiln from the outside with the old Beaumont label. That picture, I think, is made as the others were done in 1995. And there you can see the chimney with a uh, pagoda-shaped roof on top of that. and. Uh, when you were there, yeah. Yeah. I was I was there in 2015 in December, and just I think one or two weeks before we came there, there was a big storm, and during that big storm, actually the storm caught the chimney, and tore it off, <laughs> and it would it fell down somewhere within the city or just outside the city. <laughs> but uh, now I actually see that why it happens and why it only happened to Bomo is. It's quite tall and quite thin, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So the air might catch below. 
<laughs> but it looks a little bit fresher copper. Uh, probably it's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they had it flying away uh, pretty yeah. often. <laughs> yeah. Here you have a view inside uh, the firing chamber of the kiln uh, where you place uh, the, the peat where it's smoldering and the, the uh, fumes, uh, the peaty fumes uh, are going up uh, through the malt to dry it and to transport uh, the peat onto the barley corn. Yeah, next is the is the mill. It's an old one from 1960, a Porteus mill. Porteus mill, yes. Yeah. I always want to say Prometheus. <laughs> but I don't know more. <laughs> Porteus. And there Porteus. you can see the inlet, the, the wooden inlet and the red uh, cladded or painted cast iron frame. And in there are two, two uh, rolls. Um, and they are lasting quite long. Mm -hmm. These two roller pins, they are, they are not the, as narrow as, no. as the, 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 the grain mills. Uh, so they're not, not that heavily uh, worn. Yeah. Worn, And you do have to adjust them and maintain the machine pretty much uh, every year. So mm -hmm. it does have a bit of maintenance, but it never breaks down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, next is the mesh tun. And the mesh tun is really old and got a new lid 80 years ago. <laughs> so the copper lid is, is uh, added uh, later or was added later because it insulates uh, the, the mesh so that you do not need that much energy to keep the mesh hot. And there you can see uh, the blades inside uh, which turn and uh, mix uh, the barley uh, uh, so that the water is able to reach every part of the barley and tear out the sugars and below the shiny uh, plates are sieves with very small uh, holes in it so that the the sugary water can maybe drained uh, below and uh, the peels of the barley stay on top it's called a water ton and uh, it's all stainless steel. So, yeah, this is pretty much normal for the industry. These are the wash bags. There are six of them. The six is in front, which is uh, special, is the, the pipe, the gray pipes, uh, which pump the CO2 out of the, uh, the Douglas fir. Uh, For you American, it's Oregon pine. It's Oregon pine, yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's same, same tree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, with his uh, softwood tops. They are new, I think. I look inside, you see uh, a blade, a steel blade, uh, which cuts the foam during uh, the fermentation uh, down so that it won't boil over. Uh, this is done with a motor and you need it only for the time where the fermentation is running uh, at top speed. Yeah, the fermentation is done in two, two days. It's quite fast. And uh, the residual or the produced wash has an ABV of about 8%, uh, which is not that high, but significantly higher than normal beer. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is production part Two. One? One. Two. One. One. <laughs> now you had the introduction, production you have part. production. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now we're coming to the second one. This is Beaumont 15. And one, their Panorama 1986. Festivali. Uh, mm -hmm. Mjöns Nüt, that's, I think, Scandinavian, yeah. part of Scandinavian. Um, and he asks, uh, there are different, or more 15 year old on the market. And there is a, a long story to be told. Uh, in 1997, uh, I had the first contact with a Beaumont called the Darkest. Mm -hmm. And I remember that very much because 1997, 
uh, I had that bottle with me in, on my vacations uh, when Lady Di died. Ooh. So this is the remembrance of this first edition of the Beaumont Darkest. It has then, I think, 14 years of age, or uh, the next one had 14 years of age, and after quite a while, they changed it then to a 15-year-old Darkest, where we here have a miniature with the Darkest uh, writings on the label, and then they changed to 15 years, and in between, there had been a 15-year-old Mariner with a light greenish label, and uh, that one was hefty and intense. And the darkest had a bigger sherry influence. You were grinning. <laughs> a bit. <laughs> oh, why? No, uh, grinning. Uh, the, there's a guy asking a question. Uh -huh. But uh, you continue. I'll, yeah, okay. I'll answer the question when you're done. <laughs> yeah. Um, this is the 15-year-old. Uh, it has um, long maturation and a three-year finish. A three-year finish is, is definitely a second maturation. Uh, in Oloroso sherry casks. Yeah, and I decided that this 15-year-old Darkest had been one of the best whiskies I had in 25 years. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, so uh, here's a question for me. Uh, Gregory Lifanov. Uh, ben, did you always know whiskey was your destiny? Uh, was it always your favorite spirit or did it grow on you? Um, I kind of grew up with whiskey, so... Never got into any other spirits that much <laughs> <laughs> because I just knew whiskey from the very, very start. But I really got into whiskey when I was, um, I would say, what was that, 23, 22, when I was in, at university. Um, we just, it's just the way, the way your, your taste develops. Before it was just too intense. <laughs> <laughs> If you try to introduce an 18-year-old to whiskey, No, <laughs> it's just too intense. So, we now here have the 15-year-old And in some without, countries it's illegal. <laughs> without, uh, without the edition Darkest, and this time you had to taste that one, and I take the Darkest. <laughs> oh, you get the Darkest yeah, then, I get okay. the Darkest. Mm -hmm. So, the last time in the video just before... Uh, Who are they? No, a few Swedish guys in the in the chat. It's Swedish. Did they say that? I don't that? know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, no, there are too many uh, umlaut in it. <laughs> I think they have. Teren Pili. Teren Pili. Yeah. This is uh, Finnish. Finland. Finnish. Ah, from Finland then, huh? Mm -hmm. mm. Hefty. <laughs> Intense. Really. Wow. There is a smokiness, very much there, but not overwhelming, not covering everything behind. It's definitely massive peatiness together with a, a big, big sherry note. And behind that, dried fruits, sunny resins. Yeah, wonderful. And a, a hint of spice arising. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's a lot more intense than the 12-year-old. Mm -hmm. It has uh, it still has a good amount of smoke, but uh, a lot of sun-dried fruits, a lot of that sherry influence, dates, figs, a um, little bit a hint of flowery, um, and it's just way more intense than the 12 year old yeah i think uh it's one of the things why it's uh, so intense is uh you do have a normal bourbon cask and then you do have oloroso cask finish for three years a lot more than typical finish mm -hmm. yeah so cheers cheers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, really attacking, mouth-watering, cladding my mouth, very intense, saddlewood, big caramel, mm. faint maltiness, oakiness. So, 
big mouthful, very intense. It's just 43% ABV. The 12 year old has 40% ABV. This one has more, 3% more, which was always for the last 100 years uh, um, a sign for quality. Mm -hmm. mm. This one is much, much more intense in the flavor. Whereas the, the, the nose was still, there was a lot of fruitiness with the dried fruits and stuff. But now you do have a lot of oak, a lot of wood, a lot of spiciness, mm, mm, a lot of chocolate. And it's, it does have a bit of a, um, a sweetness, caramel in it. But there's a lot of deep notes going on. And it's very, very intense. I think you gave that the, the best out of 25 mm -hmm. years. I don't know why. <laughs> Uh, Horst, you say that stinky is not for you. Is Bomer in that category or below that? It's below that. <laughs> so typically, I most often are able to stand those 45%. <laughs> but whenever it goes on top of that, then it's, it's over. Grapefruit, linseed oil, and some floral touch. It's mm -hmm. intense on another level. Yes, definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, I don't think it's just the uh, the three years more or older than than the fifteen uh, than the twelve. There is uh, it's just I would say the 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 sherry casks are much more and much more intense. So I would say the the intensity of sherry casks, the 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 quality of the sherry casks. I would say it's pretty much first fill sherry casks all the way. So I was uh, asked um, if the, uh, uh, their degan, so is there a distinct taste or smell difference between the darkest and the 15? Uh, yes, the darkest is more intense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So say 5 to 10% more intense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so last time I had the, the normal 15 years and this one is really... It's really more. Mm -hmm. I do like it. It's a it's a wonderful whiskey. Mm -hmm. It's a bit more more expensive than the twelve year old, uh, but if you can afford it, I would actually say I would recommend it. And this is below thirty. This is around fifty, mm -hmm. and this is above seventy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So to give it, give them numbers. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good to have it again. Yeah. So uh, how long does the wash continue to the spirit then? Yeah. <laughs> We're going to the stills. Those are the famous Beaumont stills. In the back you see two wash stills. In the front two spirit stills. They have no reflex bowl, no constriction piece. And uh, they are not too tall. Um, they're quite small and the line arm is moving up so that you get some reflex from the line arm. And... Uh, they are, well, quite big, uh, said 20,000 liters for the wash stills and 11,500 for the spirit stills. But the writings on the <laughs> stills say something different. Uh, I don't know what really is true on that. So here they say 30,940 liters. Probably that's the nominal capacity uh, up to the manhole. And they typically fill it with 20,000. I have no idea how it is. This uh, label or um, painting on the still is from 1995. So the picture is quite old. And this was the formal, well, marketing appearance uh, of Beaumont with the gulls, and the seagulls and the sea and the um, uh, kilns and the distillery behind. Today, it's the, t uh, the appearance is more formal. Uh, yeah, no, no nature, no fauna, no flora. Uh, it's just uh, rudimentary labeled. Yeah, next one is the spirit and sample safe. So we have two sample safes to the left and to the right. And in the middle, there is a double uh, uh, did I say sample 
spirit safes the outside where you can direct the spirit either to the reflux or to the uh, spirit receiver and in the middle you have the sample safe uh, where you can measure the temperature the th uh, thermometers and uh, the density with spindles and with both spindle and temperature you're able to look up the ABV in a table yeah on top there are some uh, some gorges I don't know what it is probably temperature gorges as well yeah the next one are the warehouses of Beaumont and that are not the warehouses at the sea they are lying in the hills above the distillery in the front I think you see some some peat stacked isn't it and uh, not all of the massive amount of Beaumont produced is able to mature at the sea but this is just a few hundred meters uh, away so the air there is just the same mm -hmm. so quality shouldn't differ uh, just one special thing this is the warehouse vault number one this is a very special warehouse because it's uh, built by the sea and during high tide uh, the water reaches the wall and uh, if you have a look at the back end on the right side of the walls uh, you see it's uh, well uh, mm, you should do something on that. No, <laughs> they shouldn't because water is uh, slowly pouring in. So the inside is very wet. There are drops falling down the wall. Everything is very, very humid. And the casks you're seeing there are sherry casks, the big ones below. And they show the royal warrant because these are uh, casks owned or dedicated to the crown. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So it has E on it? E, Elizabeth Rex. Oh, Elizabeth. ER. Typically ER should be Elizabeth placed on Rex. that. Okay. Um, yeah, we move forward to, to the, the last one. <laughs> to yeah. the After you've stored your whiskey, <laughs> then it's whiskey. <laughs> and that's what ends up in the bottle. <sighs> yeah, you, you did the, the directing of the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the 18 year old. There had been a 17-year-old for long on the market. <laughs> Elizabeth Rex, a far relative to Tyrannosaurus <laughs> Rex. <laughs> FT, beheading, beheading. <laughs> I think the, 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 the power of the crown is a bit fading away currently. Yeah. yeah. So, good, 18-year-old. Um, 18-year-old. Um, there had been a 17 year old on the market for a very very long time then with the appearance of the new bottle they changed to 18 years I think it was between 2000 and 2003 probably it was 2003 and uh, then the 17 year old was pushed into the channel value and or then duty called duty free and then shortly after it was well it vanished and then were only 18 year old left on the shelves. The 18-year-old is a classical 18-year-old which is not finished, which is completely matured as I think in Oloroso Sherry Cass first, second fill. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's a little bit more expensive than the rest. And you said uh, your bottle is finished now. Yeah, I did have an uh, 18-year-old. And uh, if you have an 18-year-old bottle, I don't know, maybe it just happened to my bottle, uh, when you, you should uh, seal it quite good because if it oxidizes, it gets uh, much more fruitier, uh, but also a, bit, a little bit soapy. I had the fresh, I think we, we tried the 18, I don't know, last year or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it, was, uh, it didn't have any of the soapiness, so that was just my bottle. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's spoiled or something. Yeah, a lot smoother, more gentle than the 15 year old is. Older, mature, sherry, not that smoky, less smoky.
sweetness, fruitiness, very complex. And the peat is not that strong that you can immediately have the taste uh, of the distillery character and the sherry cask and not only you do not have to wait until the peach peat fades away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting that it's uh, much, much more gentle. I would have expected more more intense whiskey when you when you have a look at the 12 and then the 15 and now it should be more intense even with the 18 but uh, i think it's due to the the casks you do realize it's a just an oloroso sherry cask but um it's a mixture between the fresh ones and the the refill casks so you have a, a round whiskey that is um on the on the very fruity and flowery side and with a little bit of sweetness as well yeah cheers cheers mm -hmm. friendly gently full on the mm. tongue more sweetness now mouth watering and cladding my mouth with a little bit of smokiness little chocolate in the back smokiness in my mouth so the smokiness in the nose is not that big as it is on the tongue vanilla fruitiness very very complex yeah mm -hmm. mm. Mm. What I immediately get is, um, it's also in the taste, it's gentler, but as well as with the 15 year old, it's much more dark. There's a lot more oak to it. Mm. The smoke is also medium and with a lot of chocolate, with a lot of chocolate flavor in there. And mm, mm. yeah, I would say just a, a mature whiskey, a mature taste. Mm -hmm. Complex, full, lightly smoky. There was a question up there. Uh, uh, I was offered a glass of Beaumont 15 French oak in a bar. Has anyone tried that one? Fraser Richardson. Um, yeah, I think I had one of those. And the French oak, the Limousin oak, is much more intense and uh, just disturbing uh, the whole taste. That's my personal point of view. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, Bombor stands for Oloroso Sherry. There had been a uh, Portwood matured whiskey. There had been a Bomor 1955 matured in Oloroso cask. And then they recognized that it was leaking and then filled it over to a port wine cask. So they had <laughs> uh, 20 years of maturation in, in a first fill sherry cask and 20 years of maturation in a <laughs> first fill port wine cask. And they wanted to have 5,500 euros for that in 1997, I think. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> That's really, now un unbelievably really, expensive. We, we sold one, <laughs> and uh, an employee of us, our first employee, she refused to, to touch <laughs> that bottle. <laughs> <laughs> it went to Luxembourg to a banker. Mm -hmm. yeah. There was a guy asking us how drunk we are. I would say I'm not drunk. No, why? So, um, so uh, let's have you a just have six sips of whiskey and <laughs> over two hours, that doesn't make you drunk. We're not no. finishing these glasses. No, that we just take a little sip for the for the flavor. And, and that's what single malt whiskey is all about. It's not about getting drunk. It's about no. flavor. It's about tasting. So you need, uh, you, need a, you have a thousand more uh, uh, smells in your nose than you have on your tongue. Mm -hmm. So smelling for the very first 10, 15 minutes before you sip is very uh, uh, well necessary um, because there's the big, big award you have with the smelling on it. Good old Germans need more than a bit of sips of whiskey to be drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if I add that up, I do have uh, not a full dram. A full dram oh. would have been 20, 
28 mils. You have a little bit more. Maybe I do have a drum, but yeah. uh, maybe one and a half. But one and a half drums is not. It's it's, it's a beer. It's a beer. Yeah. Okay. No, it's a beer. It's a beer. Or yeah. It's, or a little definitely. bit less than. It's a beer. It's a beer. It's a beer. It's a, beer. a pint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, I think one of the guys already said there, which was his first place, second place, third place. So if you have the um, whiskies at home, just uh, say what what is your like your favorite one. So the twelve-year-old is compared quite rough. Did I mix the glasses up. The fifteen. Year old is massive, intense, more smokiness now, and the eighteen year is gentle. I think I, I think I confused the fifteen and the twelve, but I do I do remember the smells <laughs> <laughs> and the taste. Yeah. So I had a, a sequence, and then I changed it. You changed it from the, yeah. from the German one? No, I, I stayed no, the same. No, from the German one, I kept it. I kept but, it also. But the the. <laughs> If you're going in sequence, you say the 12 year old, oh, quite good for the price, below 30, very good. Uh, second, ma, oh, is that intense? Mm -hmm. This is old and really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Then you say first place, second place, third place, and then you remember and then you compare it and say, well, the 15 year old has more expression, more to offer, much more intense. So. The 15-year-old for me is the first, the 18, the second, and the 12 is the third. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I do have also have 15, 18, 12. And if you read the chat, then we have 18, 18, 18. Uh, <laughs> 18, 15, 12, 15, 15, 18, 15, 15, 18, 12. Three persons in our place. Then we have 15, 18, 12, uh, 18, 15, 12. So yeah, it's it's a close race between the 18 mm -hmm. and the, the 15. Uh, in the German, we had a few guys who actually did like the 12 as well. Mm -hmm. 15, 18, 12. 15, yeah, if, uh, 18. You, if you look for the value for money, then the 12 is, is quite up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a close race between the, the 15 and the 18. And the 12 is just, uh, it's, a, it's a good value for money drink. Yeah. Ah, uh, and then they said, well, the next time, please do other uh, uh, brands. Uh, here, we have to say we uh, got those bottles and got paid for for the tasting. Uh, so there is no chance uh, to have another bottle in between. But uh, in the next month to come, there will be other Yes, so tastings. let me give you the hint for the next tasting. The next tasting will be on the... 27th of December 2019 so just after Christmas and yeah it will be a beginner's life tasting so the the idea is a bit so the over the Christmas holidays you do Christmas at home then you go to grandma and grandma too and and then you're <laughs> sitting around on the 27th mm, what do I do in the evening you do a whiskey tasting with us and what we're gonna do we can tell you right now what uh, we're gonna taste it's gonna be the Ockentoshan 12 years old as um, the the light one then we are gonna have the uh, Ligic 10 years old and the Bunnahabon 12 years old and the uh, Tully Bardeen 228 Burgundy. So um, this gives us a, a good range of different styles of whiskey where we can explain what's, what is a peated whiskey, what is a, a lowland whiskey and what, would, what is a cask finished whiskey. And we're gonna go into how to try whiskey and just, just a, a tasting where we introduce uh, beginners to a whiskey tasting. Mm -hmm. So if you'd be really glad to us, then you would uh, forward the whiskey.com slash live on the 27th of December to uh, guys who don't know whiskey yet. And maybe you can introduce these guys to whiskey because it's always great to have a, a nice circle of friends who do also enjoy whiskeys because tasting whiskey together is just much more fun than mm -hmm. alone. Yeah, and I would like to say thank you to all that praise we got. Ben and Horst are my favorites. So very good. Thank you that you enjoy that show. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this time we had a little bit more of audience here 
Uh, I think we're up to 110 or something at, at some point. Now we're at 100. Yeah. So, very good. Thank you. And uh, please forward this video uh, to your friends. So next time, probably we will be more than that. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever you're able to get your fingers on those bottles, a small set of miniatures, then you can re-watch this video. This will be still online uh, after finishing this live feed so that you're able to do that tasting with your friends again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.